Hey, beautiful people, this is me, Azra. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. I know you're taking care of your minds, your hearts, and your entire being. Thank you for tuning into this beautiful Sunday service message. I know this is going to help you get to where you're supposed to go. I know this message is going to be one of clarity, one of truth, one of, I want to say, counsel, wise counsel, and one of passion. So as we're tuning in, I'm saying thank you to everybody who supports this channel. I know um, it's been hard time and time again. Today we're gonna talk about loyalty. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about loyalty in the matter that can help us. Okay. Right now we are in a space in time where loyalty is absolutely a must because. I want to say, first of all, loyalty is one of the characteristics that shows how much of a person is, okay? You can always tell by looking at somebody's actions how loyal they are. Now, before we get to the topic of who we need to be loyal to, okay? <laughs> Y'all know where I'm going with this. We oftentimes think that we need to be loyal to a lot of things. We need to be loyal to our parents. We need to be loyal to our friends. We need to be loyal to our, our basketball, our favorite basketball team. We need to be loyal to our favorite soccer team. We need to be loyal to our favorite football sports team. We need to be loyal to this restaurant where we go eat every Friday. We need to be loyal to these friends, to this neighborhood, to this county, to this country. We need to be loyal to our, our tribe where we come from. We need to be loyal to this community because we serve the same God. We need to be loyal this way, that way, whichever way. And most of the time, you know, it's going to feel good at first because you're being pushed into these various settings where people are needing your energy they need your wise counsel if you're a person of 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 great spirit or of great heart you're going to be solicited and that's a good thing in the beginning but once you know that inner voice or that inner channel starts to become i want to say watered down then you start questioning who will i remain loyal or in times of great turmoil, like now, right now, people are feeling a sense of instability, right? Riots are happening. People are losing jobs. The economy is slowly decreasing. Um, it gets it gets it more and more expensive to buy, produce fresh fruits and vegetables at the marketplace. Some places of the world, people are dealing with homelessness. There are so many news of distractions that people are falling in and they're like, what should we do with this loyalty thing? Who should I remain loyal to? And my next question is this. Who have you remain loyal to that has never shown any sign of betrayal towards you? That is who you should be remaining loyal to. So because we're humans and we're dealing with humans, it's, I want to say it's kind of vain to look after loyalty in, in humans. <laughs> I know, right? I, I do come up with a lot of sense of distrust, but it's not mistrust. It's not distrust. It's knowing how to doze loyalty and towards who okay not everybody's going to be loyal towards you and i'm talking straight up from experience not everybody's going to be loyal to you not everybody's going to show a sign that they support you and that's okay that's life we learn from these life experiences but what we're going to need is to remain loyal to this voice this voice inside of us or to god however you look at it that is the only safe space where you can be real you can talk, you can express yourself, you can share your ideas, you can share your innermost feelings, and there will never be any judgment for doing that, 
for being vulnerable, for speaking your truth, for showing signs of, I want to say, humility. Because when you're dealing with God, God doesn't care of you know how much how much many how many masks you can hold in front of him he sees your heart he sees how you feel he sees the things that you do against your own will right and if you know anything about my show that i broadcast on cues of grace that's a podcast that i mainly speak about so many topics and i truly do invite you to go over and listen to that podcast okay but in the many, many times where you're going to feel, I want to say, um, somehow you're going to feel, um, you're going to feel like with God, you can be open. You can be an open book, but it's, it's, you know, it's something that you develop over time. It's not something, it's not just a given. And if you started praying yesterday, continue praying today and tomorrow and the day after it's consistency. Con a connection with God and a true connection with God is one that little can be told on how you're going to maintain it. But it's only through consistency of wanting to connect to God that it's going to become a habit. It's going to become a routine. It's going to become consistent to the point where, you know, it's, it's a natural thing because Throughout our lives, we've been told that there are many forms and sources of authority external of us to which we need to show loyalty. You need to show loyalty to your school. You need to show loyalty to your after school program. You need to show loyalty in your sports team, making sure that you win. You need to show loyalty everywhere you go. But are you show showing loyalty to yourself? And in developing a connection with God, the way you develop loyalty with yourself is how much you you no longer go against your free will and let me explain or your will so let's say you want to do something let's say you're driven to do something and when i say do something it can start by just a thought okay you could be driven or you could have a dream of doing something you don't know necessarily how to go about it but you just know that you have this big idea, you have this big thought, you have this, this sentiment that comes with that idea. You have that feeling, you have that, nost that feeling of nost nost nostalgia. <laughs> nostalgia. You have that sense of amazement with that idea that comes with. And you listen to your thoughts and you, and you hear your thoughts and you see your thoughts. Although, you know, you don't connect to all of them because not all of them are representative of your true will. But only when your feelings are, I want to say, involved. And even so, there needs to be questioning as to which of these thoughts needs entertainment from you. Which of these thoughts are, I want to say, equivalent to how your heart speak, right? And in developing that relationship with the most high, you get to sit down and know, okay, well, that's the direction I'm going because in my communication or in my way of entertaining my relationship to God or remaining loyal to God, this is how I know is right for me. And when you know this is right for you, this is how you develop loyalty within yourself. By developing loyalty within yourself, it's something small. It starts small. It could just start with you know, you know the saying, a mustard seed of trusting that inner voice that is leading you in a direction and you only have God to confirm if it's the right direction. And the more you trust that voice, the more you trust that path, the more you develop loyalty to you, yourself, and to God. And it's very important in these times we're in because everybody's feeling shaky in their boots. Everybody is feeling somehow some form of instability. Some people run towards um, escapism, some form of escapism because there are many. Some people run to friends. Some people run to all kinds of ways, all kinds of external validation or all kinds of 
um, I want to say point of references to which people go and find some form of reassurance. But let's say you go and knock on the door of your friend who usually is always, always loyal to you. And that day that you need her the most, she's not there. Not only she's not there, but she shows you that she has nothing to do with you when you need her the most. And it can happen, you know, sometimes she could be going through something that you have no, no recollection of because she never shared that part of herself with you. So there was a lack of loyalty to begin with in a so-called friendship. And that's just an example amongst many that I could be sharing with you, right? But understanding, understanding that the most important people and the most important way of showing loyalty is to yourself and by doing so by default you are trusting god you are showing your loyalty to god because when you start walking by faith and not by sight trust me you're developing some form of reassurance in the confidence of trusting that inner knowing that is developing loyalty that is the development of true loyalty now in developing that tr that true loyalty, that true trust, how is it after okay for you to go out in the, in the world and because you have these new set of eyes, you know that you know not everybody can be trusted, not everybody shows true loyalty. How do you make sure that you find people who show true lo loyalty? Well, you will find the right people that show true loyalty by how they show loyalty to themselves. If people have boundaries, that's great. We need more of those actually, okay? When we meet people, we need to see how they walk. We need to see how they, they spend their time. Are they always, you know, thinking of X, Y, and Z? Are they developing themselves? Are they going somewhere? Are they choosing a path? Are they walking on a path already? Have they developed a, a loyal bond with God? And if so, is it showing in how they move? We need to be observant of these things if we want to develop and maintain healthy and strong connections with individuals. But in order for, for us to be discerning of this, we need to be observant. We need to take our time because not everybody has developed a loyal bond to God. Okay, some people, as soon as they go through something, they become shaky. They, they cut all ties with God. They're like, hey, God, I can't trust you. Let me go holler to my, to my name or to my friend James. He going to hook it up, right? <laughs> he going to give me, he going to give me, um, I want to say bail money, right? And then once you come out, you know, that, that bail money so that your friend James fronted you, well, now you got to give it back with like 25% interest, okay? And he's going to be coming for his money too. So I don't know what type of loyalty that is, but that's just an example amongst many. So a loyal heart, a loyal person is one that develops a connection with God. And by how you move, how you have a routine, how you sometimes stay to yourself. And that doesn't mean that we're all needing to be hermits over here, okay? I'm a big hermit because I choose that I'm I choose to see the reality that I'm a very sensitive person. So I can't just be out in the open. I mean in nature, yes, but I can't just be exchanging my energy just randomly just because I need I there's sometimes needing to be thoughts or thoughtful, I want to say thoughtful processes behind my logistics and my transports and, you know, how I move, where I choose to go, who I choose to associate with. Because again, the same discernment I apply for myself in choosing to develop a strong, loyal bond to God is the same way I will apply the same discernment in choosing who I want to connect. And it can piss a lot of people off. I can be seen as someone who's very cold, very defensive, very mean, uh, very disloyal, you know, all kinds of things. But that don't matter to me because at the end of the day, I know who I need to remain loyal to. And that's the only 
important, only important connection to God. After that, after connecting or developing that loyal bond, I can trust myself. I can feel at peace with myself. I can then trust the people around me in my immediate environment, right? The loved ones, those that I care, those that I care for. And even so, you know, I'll take an example with my children. I love my children and I would do anything. I would do anything to see them happy, to see them smile, to see them grow, develop, becoming beautiful men. But I tell them, I tell them they need to develop their loyal heart. I tell them because, you see, as parents, sometimes we think that we have to wait until they're, they're much older for them to un understand certain things. But no, children are very wise, okay? I tell my young one, I tell all of them, if you want to be going someplace in life, you need to have a loyal heart. And I don't get into the details. I show them by, by example. My children, when they see me, they think, you know, I don't have any needs. I don't have any wants, which is not true. But I will tell them. I will share with them. I will express to them certain things about discernment discerning people, discerning individuals, having clear boundaries, thinking of who you should be loyal to and who you shouldn't be loyal to. At the end of the day, just giving them a little bit of feed, food, right? You're feeding them just a little bit at a time. It, get, it gets in steel and they're not going to need by 18. They're not going to need to wait by the age of 18 to understand what it means to have a loyal heart. They will already be putting it into application. And that is what is important with children today or with anybody who's under your care, your responsibility. Be that example that you want to see around you. That loyal heart is an important one. And when we talk about a loyal heart, we can, we can look at an animal who's very, to, who's very loyal to himself and he does not give a two fucks of who's watching, who's criticizing him, but he's still going to show a loyal heart. Tell me about who you think that animal is, because I don't know. <laughs> or I may know, I just don't want to share it. But if you think of an animal who's very loyal to themselves, you will know a few things by observing them. They don't care. They absolutely don't care. They're very strong. They stand strong in who they are. They don't budge, okay? Those are animals I'm talking about. We could equate it maybe to a lion, okay? When it's time to fight, they fight. They fight for their own. They protect what is theirs. Their territory, their females, their children. A lion could equate to that. An elephant could also equate to that characteristics of having a loyal heart, right? We could look at many animals and we would see that there, that's, that there is that characteristics that transpires very naturally. So I hope you enjoyed this beautiful Sunday service message, okay? Do continue to take care of your minds, your hearts, and your entire being, yes. And continue developing your loyal heart, okay? We all need to continue developing our loyal heart. And by doing that again, you're going to see your life is going to transform surely, okay? Slowly but surely, you're going to get there or you're already there, okay? On that note, continue to take care. Peace.